I have to be interviewed. Oh, do you, wait, do you not want to do the interview for Life of Pi? No, I just feel like I... Should I not record this one? Whatever you want. Like, I mean, you've read it before, so I, I want to hear your perspective on it, too. Okay, well, you guys were saying fair treatment. <laughs> um, I'm definitely posting that other one on YouTube, so I don't know if you want, you know, if we should record this one or not. Um, I'm going to leave it up to care, you. But like, would prefer I, to just talk to me. I feel like when, with an interview, I'm just rattling off, which, okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, I can do just as well as any woman. Yeah. But... <laughs> a conversation. Yeah, a conversation. I'd like to hear, like... Like what, what I think? Take. Yeah. Because that reaction, like, I know you've read it, or at least heard of it. Wow. Um, this is, this is, this is kind of weird for me. Um... Okay, I, I do want to record this because I want to see where it goes, but I'm going to very okay. much try and make it as much a conversation as I can. Okay. Because one of the most difficult things I have found since I got this little device okay. is being myself when it's on. Like in face of it? Yeah, whether it's looking at me or whether it's looking at you, if I'm kind of queued up, it just it completely kind of changed my paradigm about what acting must be like and what the difference is like between, you know, I don't know what happened when James Carey was 12 years old. Presumably he was funny and presumably he was funny when he was 15 and he was funny when he was 18. But that very first night that he did his very first comedic performance on whatever it was, you know, in Living Color or whatever, uh -huh. it must have just been a whole different world because the expectations and what? Oh, you're just talking to yourself? Yeah, I threw away the lid from this jar. Okay. You know what the interesting thing about that is, though? It's like... Like, I can understand, like, being the performer, but even just being the interviewer. You are... As an interviewer, you're like a receptacle for other people's thoughts and opinions. Right. You know? And, like... It's kind of a trusted... It's like, a, I feel, you know... Well, that's the thing, too. I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to, um... Oh, anyway, I want to... I, there's... I got to come clean about something. I've, I've read Ishmael, too. Oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. And you're just like, what? I was feigning ignorance, because I wanted to see... I, I wanted to learn something. About... About what people think. And I, I knew that... I knew that there was... You know I knew what? there was something That's that would happen that couldn't up. have happened. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> All right. The most fucked up part about that yeah. was that I can totally get where you're coming from. Oh yeah. And totally understand why you did that. Really? It doesn't change Do you the fact me? that it was fucked up. Okay, so maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! Wait, what are you doing? So. Okay. As long as the tell me about on, Life of Pi. Tell you about Life of Pi. So we're switching. Is it recording? Back. Yeah, if the red light's on, it's recording. Okay. A little teeny red. Um, okay. I'm going to try and do it like you did so I'm not, like, shaking all over the place. Oh, okay, So yeah. that was a good idea. Um, I've done an interview about Life of Pi. What type of interview? I was talking to a girl casually just like this. Mm-hmm. I posted it on YouTube because I thought it turned out really good. Mm-hmm. I compared and contrast Life of Pi and Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And we also talked a little bit about the kind of... I'm sure lots of people are having an ongoing debate over do we need a spiritual healing of the world or do we need a scientific uh, paradigm shift of the world or both and how... Is know, science going to save the world or is it philosophy? Is science and philosophy or, or even putting science and philosophy together, is that going to save the world or is it going to be like new age stuff? Yeah. Like the raising of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I called the YouTube post Ishmael versus, no, I called it Life of Pi versus Ishmael versus dot, 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 raising consciousness, question mark. Okay. Like, you know, what, wh where are we going with this? And uh -huh. it just was a casual conversation with a girl for about 15 minutes in front of Barnes and Noble. Wow, you're right. Okay, I'm like way on the spot. <laughs> this is like so. So tell me. Medicine. So tell me about when you when you did like this interview kind of conversation thing. Mm -hmm. Was it like a compare and contrast, or was it like a collaboration, or kind of a compare and contrast? I'm. The differences between the two struck me on my second read of Life of Pi. 
The two books. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they I think they come from a fundamentally different worldview. Really? Mm hmm A completely contrary and mutually exclusive one. Okay, so so to you, what does what is the worldview that's encapsulate, encapsulated by Ishmael? The world is a sacred place, and we belong here as equals among our relatives in the web of life. Okay. So that was a nice little snippet, nice little, what's it called? A blurb? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then, if you had to blurb Life of Pi, how would you blurb it? Humans are sacred creatures, and they have a unique place in a material world that they are above. See, I disagree entirely. Okay. And I'll tell you why. For me, Life of Pi, like I said, it's earlier, it's... Every time I read it, I approach it from, like, a different school of thought. Mm. And so, like, the first time I read it, I, I approached it as an interesting piece of fiction. And the literary devices was what struck me, because yeah. I was approaching it from that school of thought. The second time I read it, I read it from... So I'm a psychology major in school. And speaking of literary devices, the thing the kid does with the Japs at the... Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. I have no racism, I'm just like, I don't care, so I say whatever I want. I'm one of those people. <laughs> if you're Japanese, don't kill me. <laughs> oh my god. The thing that he says to the interviewers at the yeah. end of that thing where he flips all the characters and that, you know, literary device. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, that, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's like, <clears throat> what is, what is truth? What is fiction? What is a story? what is a memory like all that was kind of things i was chewing on the first mm. time i was reading it well more so the second time i was reading because because the first time i read it i was just like oh this is really freaking a cool story and then at the end like you said that twist definitely puts a different perspective perspective on it so then the second time i was reading it